know it's cold outside, but this is wild. It is. This is a lot of people. Season 15, episode two. We, I mean, you're in the right place. Amen. And I want to welcome everybody that is on uh, Facebook. Amazing that we are getting to go live with you. And so very excited about that. And uh, we've got just a quick announcement that we're going to go straight to a wonderful lineup because the theme tonight is do not quit. You cannot quit. You cannot quit. And so we're going to talk about that tonight. We're going to keep going. Defy the statistics that, that are out there. So you guys enjoy the Facebook lives on Mondays, the lunch with one. Okay. I think that's one of the most exciting things that's happened in a long while because we all would took classes and Gwen would be teaching in the class and we would all think like, you know, did she put a microphone in my house or like, how does she know what's going on in my life that this is answer my, you know, so, so intimately, you know, it's my life, obviously it's the spirit of God. Uh, but we've also had times where we're like, I wish I could ask Gwen a question right now, you know? And so with the Monday afternoon at 12 o'clock, the lunch with Gwen, and now with what we're doing here on Wednesdays for the You Can Overcome show, you have two opportunities during the week where you can send in your questions. And Gwen's like, send me your questions, please send me your questions. To me, that's a huge announcement, and that's the coolest thing in the world. So take advantage of it. If you guys have questions, you want to get in the promised land, you want a deeper relationship with God, you want the help, Send the questions please. in. You have an opportunity to do that tonight. Please, please, please. I love the questions and everyone else's too because your questions are the same as anyone else's. Okay, so what's going on out there? Hashtag I quit. I mean, this week um, they estimate that, a, you know, a good, I don't know, a, probably, I don't know, 80% of the people have already quit on their New Year's resolution. And then by February 2nd, they estimate that literally everybody's given up. Uh, the difference here is we are, we are definitely not giving up here. It is not about giving up. It is about changing your lifestyle, changing your heart, changing your relationship with God. Over from a, a relationship with the world and a refrigerator over to a relationship with God. So... Um, we're going to talk tonight about why people quit. We've also had lineups that are the 100-pound lineups and that type of thing. Tonight, we specifically range between 25 to maybe 50 at the most. But uh, I want to talk tonight a little bit more, as we did at Lunch with Gwen, about uh, some, some, losing the, that last bit because there's a, real, there's a real momentum there. It tells your heart that last bit really tells your heart and like what's really in your heart. So we're excited, we don't wanna delay it and we, we're still excited about everybody watching. Y'all get your questions ready as we're going through this. We're gonna start with a great little lineup. They'll give you their name, but let's all give them a warm welcome. My name is Cindy Barker. I have lost 40 pounds through Way Down and kept it off for over 13 years. And that is also through three, gaining the weight and losing the weight back down through three pregnancies. Uh, prior to Way Down, I had done every diet that is available out there. And so I just want to encourage anyone out there who um, is doing Way Down now that if you continue to listen to the truth that uh, even after my pregnancies, learning to go back down to a smaller portion size and things like that uh, only happened because I persevered, stayed plugged in, listened to the truth and put it into practice. So believe me, if I can do this, you can do this. Don't give up. I'm Jennifer Quinn and I've lost 35 pounds and had it off 14 years. And I've persevered through having children um, very small all the way up through adulthood on um, just taking my emotions to God through all the different seasons of life and eating in God's boundaries. And I'm smaller on the other side of four children than I was before we had children. And our marriage is sweeter. And I feel like we're enjoying life more because we've learned that God is everything. And so persevere. My husband always reminds me whenever it's tough, it's worth the fight. So persevere and you can do it.
And my name is Tom Quinn, and uh, in 2003, I was first, first officially introduced to Way Down. My wife Jennifer started in 1999, but it was at that point that I realized that what Gwen has taught here from the beginning, that we can find God's spirit in anything, and it really is something as basic as finding his spirit with your next meal. And then that just translates to all kinds of other blessings and just finding in his spirit in everything. So finally quit smoking. As Jennifer shared, we have a beautiful marriage now. We know where the answers are. We know to go to him for everything. So um, if we can do this, you can do it too. Do not quit. Hi, everyone. I'm Aaron Wheeler. I'm 21 years old, and I started gaining weight around the age of 11 and 12, and um, I knew something had to be done, and I honestly struggled with it, but um, I'm so thankful for this weight on teaching and those that didn't give up on me and helped me uh, along the way because um, I started around 15 to lose weight, and um, I've lost 50 pounds and have been down since, so if I can do it, you can do it too. This is a complete honor to be on this stage, and the only reason I'm here is because I never gave up. There's somebody out there right now who's thinking about firing themselves and taking themselves out of the race. Don't do it. You're in the right place. Keep going. You can do this. I found Way Down in 1996 when I first got pregnant with my daughter. Well, the only time I got pregnant with my daughter, Madeline. <laughs> She's now 21. And we're still here, and we as a family are running after this because we stayed in classes, we come to church, we're here on Wednesdays, I'm up in the night on my knees. I got a way of escape today. I bit on a piece of tuna fish sandwich, and it had a piece of glass in it, and I'm like, good one, God. Gwen said, <laughs> Gwen said she likes to be empty when she's up on stage, and guess what? I'm empty. <laughs> Don't give up. Yeah. I mean, that just got me psyched up. So I'm, I'm not going to quit. Are you going to quit, oh, too? I saw her pom-poms in the chair over there. Though. She's, she's I love it. Up. I love Jean That's Kirsten. awesome. I mean, she psychs us up. So, uh, okay, we've got two sets tonight. Two sets. We're going to start with the first set and that struggled to kind of keep it going and but made it all the way. Please join Ted and I in welcoming Cindy Barker, who lost 30 pounds, and Rebecca Nessler, who lost 40. Okay, so who wants to go first tonight? So, okay, all right. You've already gotten warmed up here, Cindy, and gave us a little bit of the story, so. Uh, do you want me to give my whole testimony, or what? Absolutely. I mean, give, give, I, I'm, we're really focusing tonight, okay? Everybody out there, uh, don't click off yet. We're, we're focusing tonight on those, not, those times in your life where you are like, uh, you know, it's like I give up, I want to quit. I mean, I get, you get back on the scales and you thought you lost you know, and it, the scales go up or, you know, um, you can't put, you, you're, you're trying on some clothes and they don't fit. Um, you're, you feel like you, you know, tried everything and, and it's still, nothing seems to work. You can't get motivated to, to get, even get it going. Uh, all these quit things, this new year resolutions, you get so psyched up and then it's over by, uh, uh, so many people have already quit. It's all over Facebook, you know, um, all these people giving up. So let's focus tonight on, um, you know, uh, everybody just jump in here. I want to focus on what is it that kept you going and um, what motivated you, so. Yeah, well, I guess I would just start by saying that there's probably no one in here who hasn't had that lie. Just give up, you know, you're not going to make it. 
Um, I know I personally have, you know, and especially when um, you feel like things aren't going well or you put on a few pounds or, um, so my personal testimony is I lost, I joined Way Down uh, in 2005, did my first Way Down class and I was, you know, young and single and I lost all of my weight quickly. Um, so I lost 40 pounds and it was in maybe two months, something along those lines. I mean, it was very, it was pretty rapid. Um, so for new people, can weigh down be fast? Yes. The answer is fast. Yes. I would say of all the places, the, the difference would be fast, but it has a permanent, uh, it has a permanent way about it that the others don't have, but you've got to find what that, that secret is. So, Right. And I would say that I did just follow hunger and fullness. So I didn't mix it with dieting. I didn't try to do anything else or or exercise along with it. I simply did hunger and fullness. Uh, exercise was actually being a control for me prior to way down and I was, way, I was exercising five days a week and still had an extra 40 pounds on, so. Um, oh, it, it, yeah, you can out eat your exercise in five minutes. <laughs> like everything you and just And I did ate. that every oh, day. Yeah, you could every do day. it. You could do it, I did it. <laughs> oh, I mean, I was taking all the exercise class at UT Knoxville. You know, I was taking, I mean, they had classes. You could actually get college credit, get this, for going in and doing some exercises. I thought, wow, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll take that class. <laughs> and uh, I made a C in it because I didn't. <laughs> it's like one of the few things you look at my transcript, it's like a C. You know, I thought it was like a, one of those getaway classes that you could like just add and, you know, get some hours and it brought my, my average down. But I, I, it, I had a goal. They made you make a goal, and I didn't meet the goal. I was trying to exercise my weight off, and I didn't, I didn't meet the goal. Um, yeah, bummer. it's so true. I never could. I never could lose. I never could budge five pounds on the diet, which was definitely God and grace from God just yeah. to keep me stuck. And um, so I lost my weight right away, and then um, kept it off. Kept it off for years and years, and I never really had a struggling period until after I had, after I had gone through my first pregnancy, I, um, that weight took, I mean, it took longer than it should have. I, w I mean, okay. so, I mean, it definitely, like, I had to get back in there and really focus and go through okay. a period where I got refocused. And then after I had my second son is when I really, it took me a couple of years to get that weight all the way off, you okay. know, and I can testify because I've gone through three and I didn't struggle after my last one that, um, and that came off in between six and nine months. So you, there. Got, you got increasingly more in tune to the, that thing that helped Right, you. which was a relationship with God. Okay. It was, it was prayer. Okay. And the, I do feel like what held me back, you know, in, in hindsight, looking back on it, that um, some of the things that caused me or, or exacerbated the struggle that I had was a wrong focus on the scale and focusing on um, keeping my eyes on a size I wanted to be, praise a man, all of the things that I had before, the reasons that I wanted to be thin. And, and instead of when I messed up, going back to God and saying, God, I messed up, you know, help me to figure out exactly what I need to do different and getting ready to pass that test and connecting back to God. And so, um, one of the main talks that helped me when I finally got all that weight back off was emotional eating because it goes back through all of the different paths that you can take. It's from the original series, not not change, the, but the original. The original. Oh wow! Um, and, well, and what it, did I say? I mean, it I was, have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It goes back through, and I would listen to it like every single day. But it goes back through the different paths that you can go on, um, and what to do with stress in your Watching life, like when you, yeah, and so basically, if you're, you know. Are you like selling pirate copies of that? Uh, it's not out there, right? It's like a secret no, tape. On, that... No, honestly, I think I had a CD <laughs> of it from the original, like my parents had done way down back in the 90s, and they had can a CD of it. Can you access it and or I saw, is it on all I don't access? Think, I don't know if you can. Uh, I see what I'm saying. Can. Can. I've tried. Call Cindy Barker right now, 1-800-844-5208. But the information, the information is in the tablet. 
Okay. Um, and it talks about, it's basically the, 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 the paths thing. of self-focus or the paths walks. of um, depression, but it talks about like the four oh, different yeah, yeah. paths no, that you no, can no, take no, 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 when, no, something, yeah. when, when something goes wrong or when you mess up. You can either get self-focused, you can get angry, you can project, so, yes. you can fix it all yourself. That's, that is a fundamental essential chapter. It is, it's, it, and it was, I've, I've kept it, maybe switched it up, either the latest copy and the way it works. I, I remember even doing that. It is old material for sure, but it is, it's talking about um, any, 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 any direction you go is, is going to be a dead end. And it's going to want, you're going to wind up being bigger and heavier and more miserable or more miserable in any situation that you're in. You know, if you're not doing it right with marriage or with your job or with any of it. Yeah. I mean, it's why people, they try drugs or they try, people will try, what's interesting is people try everything but what they need to try. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's a lie, it's a delusion, but they try everything but going to God, what the, if you just only had that one tape, that original tape, every time you feel this urge to eat, but your body's not calling for it, go to God. Every time you feel this head hunger, mouth hunger, any reason to eat, but you're not hungry, it's definitely about uh, going to God and this relationship with God. And, but what does that mean? So, but it, you, you, you got better with it as time went on. Right, yeah, so, um, so I just started putting that into practice. I mean, uh, and it's all fundamental. It's like you said, you can listen to the first tape and know that that's what you're supposed to do, but, uh, you know, but I was getting focused on the scale and I was getting focused on myself and I was getting focused on problems and worries and, you know, everything. I mean, it's busy life and there's so many other things you can get focused on other than just going to God in prayer. And, and that was the main thing that it took was just remembering that when you feel that worry or that anxiety or whatever it is, just from the struggles or the worries of life, and um, you go to God with that. You gotta go to God with that. And so really it just came down to my prayer life, learning mm -hmm. to pray mm -hmm. over everything. And like even today, I mean, I was still putting this into practice every day. Um, just, uh, you know, I've, I've got three little ones now. And, um, you know, and so it's busy and, and they're active. And, and so, and I kept feeling like, I was feeling kind of tired, but I was feeling like maybe I was hungry or, you know. So even with that, I just, I stopped and I just prayed like, God, I feel like I'm hungry, but I'm not sure, could you just make it clear? Yeah. You know, instead of just going and grabbing something. Right. Because I'm like, oh, I'm tired. I must be hungry. I'll just go right. eat something. So it's just that focus of, no, I'm going to wait and I'm going to go to God and ask him to make it clear. And he does. He, it was like literally within a minute, minute that my stomach growled and God made it clear. And so then I had peace. Yeah. Peace in the storm, which you've taught us. Yeah, it's beautiful. Very beautiful. Beautiful testimony. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Our darling Rebecca... Thank you for joining us tonight. And, for okay. Uh, so my story starts, I guess, like in 2002. My mother-in-law had found this message or way down and thin and lost 150 pounds. And I had met my husband then and turned away from way down and then came back in 2006 to visit and hated it. And then came back in 2008 when we moved here and realized this is where I needed to be. Um, Smoking was gone, all the antidepressants were gone, and then there was still greed. And it took a long time for me to figure out that the greed was still there and that I had put on 40 pounds when I came in here, and it, it was mind-blowing to me. I was always thin, always. And you know, you think that thin people don't have a problem with weight, well, you can't tell what's really going on on the inside, and I was struggling. I was in pain, and I was um, not able to get it off. I went through multiple accountability partners. I took a million classes and still couldn't figure out what I was doing where I couldn't lose this last little bit. And um, God recently just had me slow way down. He caused me to get really ill and I was out of it for probably two weeks. And during that time, it was a lot of introspection. It was a lot of crying out to God. It was a lot of what am I missing? And he kept showing me that my struggling was infiltrating my children it was infiltrating my house and that it was causing all this discord and pain that was going on. 
And um, I realized then that I couldn't allow any of that anymore. And so um, the last little bit of that was, was gone. Even through the holidays, I managed to keep the weight off. Um, I managed to keep my focus to God and um, I'm getting answered prayers all the time now. And that was something that I just really felt like I wasn't getting anymore at that last little bit. And um, God allowed the last little bit to come off and my kids are starting to fall back in suit and we're starting to see um, where God's blessing our home again and all of that. And something that really helped was whitewashed from ancient past. And that was something that I really had to listen to over and over again because I really felt like that's what I was doing. I was the brick wall that was beautiful but kept covering it up with the white paint just to make people think that I was doing what I needed to be doing. Um, and I'm just grateful. I'm grateful that, that I was able to hear that. I am grateful that you went from trying to please people to trying to please God. Yes. Because therein, once again, lies the answer. Yes. It, it, it just keeps boiling back down to it. Again, we try everything. We try everything. But taking that time, I don't know if people think it's a waste of time or what, but it's totally, it's totally everything, isn't it? For me, it was, I didn't want to admit that I needed God in everything. Um, it was, oh, I can still manage this. Oh, I know what to do. I have the tools, but was I using them? And it was this constant lie that I was listening to in my head is what kept me from crying out to God that I actually did need him. I did need him in everything, and now he's there. You know, you can liken it to uh, different, there's, I do a lot of marriage counseling, but you, you know, people don't understand how, what a companion God's looking for. He, and he's, how intimate he is and how, um, how much, you know, he wants our attention and our dependency and our interaction. And so when you're trying to lose the weight or you're trying to overcome any of the obstacles in your lives if without him, then it's just not gonna work. You wonder why it's not working. But you've got a relationship of where it's casual or it's, it's just one of those relationships where you're, you're both there but you're not really connecting and you're both doing your own thing or you're, you're almost hiding out so that you, you don't have to connect and you're, you're growing apart year after year after year and uh, you're more into yourself and you, you don't care as much you know, for, for that partner. And so there's all kind of dead marriages like that and they, they, they grow apart as the years go by. Living separate, separately, but they still are married, right? But, it, but they're not. And, and here's, the, here's the thing, is that it's, it is, with this relationship with God is something you have got to go after. And God wants it. He wa I, there's nothing in my entire experience, in my entire life, all this time, I have never, ever um, lost sight of that of how badly, and it's all over the scriptures, it's all over the relationships with anyone in the Bible that had a relationship with them, and then anybody that I ever knew that had relationships. I remember seeking those people out when I was young and looking for these people that had, uh, because, it, it, I mean, I was in around religious people, but they thought I was, um, I don't know, they would call me too excited about it. Uh, to, you know, too excited about it, and they couldn't identify, so they had to put me in a category of just like, you know, she's she's too excited, and she's just a simpleton, and um, and so uh, that was that was how they they pegged me, but um, I would seek people out that had a relationship, and I can remember it would always be in maybe some of the most, it was, I remember this lady that I was, you know, teaching at the University of Memphis, and I would uh, get there at a certain time. I mean, all instructors were getting there at different hours, whatever, in your own little room, and there was a lady that was, a, she was a janitor, and uh, she, uh, and she basically just said, I saw the Bible on your, on your desk, and, and, and she started talking to me about her relationship with God and how she had found, you know, she was praying and then she really had to have this money and, 
and then it was, she put on this old coat and she put her hand down in it and found this $10 or whatever it was that she found. But, you know, always just looking for, it, it usually a very unsuspecting person maybe, but, it, but they, would, they would be there and want to talk about their relationship with God. And that, that really was the only thing that was interesting to me was that pursuit, was talking to people who literally were coming in contact with the divine interacting with, you know, the, the immortal with mortals. It, it, it just was always a fascinating subject to me and intriguing and rewarding. And so with that came this pursuit of seeing that, oh my word, I can ask and the Bible will flop over and I can, I can get up. I, when, I, when I'm awakened, I just never think of it as, I, you know, oh, I, I woke up or something. Well, I know that it's God waking me up. So it just never really bothers me to wake up because then I know it's my time to go to God. And then there'll be times I'll just go, God, you know, can you, can you put me back to sleep, you know? And um, uh, the other night I was asking for dreams that would be super, super happy, which was kind of an unusual request, but you know, can you put me back to sleep now? Because I'd pray in and talking to him, and then I asked him to, you know, if he, you know, could make my dreams, um, you know, very happy dreams instead of kind of feeling weird or empty or something. And I woke myself up. I fell back to sleep. He answered that. Then he, it, I woke up. I was belly laughing out loud, <laughs> and uh, and it was it was just funny. I mean, what was going on was funny. As somebody was so making me laugh. And so, um, and, I, and it woke me up. And God, let it wake me up so that I can go in there and see. I am with you. I am, this relationship is real. What you're doing is real. What you're, you know, you know he, he's, he's re reinforcing to, to get you to come on, come on, come on. But when the prayers hit the ceiling, when you're going your own way, you're controlling everything and everybody and you are doing what you want to do when you want to do it, how you want to do it because you're into that self that uh, the sermon from last Sabbath, that is real. That's the dead end streets. You keep going and it's all about you. I mean, you'll get to the point where someone touches you and, and you're hypersensitive or someone, you know, is, is chewing potato chips and you're hypersensitive or, you know, you can't, I mean, you know, it's mothers that, that can't nurse or, you know, they're just, it's all about them or, whatever, it's, it's all this hypersensitivity to self will inc continue to grow until you really almost go mentally crazy. I mean, it, focus on yourself. You want, hey, you want, you want to go to a mental institution? Then just keep focusing on your little old self and uh, it'll do it to you. So, but here you are, both of you, how beautiful and found the key which is a relationship with God, and now you're going out after it with all. You wouldn't give it up for anything, would you? Mm. Oh, absolutely not. No. Never. Never in a million years. The thought of going back out there scares the pants off of me. There I you won't go. do it. And even, I even heard the lie. I, you're just not getting it. You need to leave. Somebody else needs your seat. Somebody else needs this more than you do. Oh, that's a big lie. It's a big lie, but it's a painful lie. It's, it hurts. It hurts. It's, a it's, a, it's part of that depression type feeling, you know, heavy heart. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, it's beautiful. And Ted, I know that you love God with all your heart. You get up every day and go back after it every day. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a life. Like you, you said before, it's a lifestyle. You know, I'm, we want to do this for the rest of your life. And I remember when Candace first introduced me to the class, when I first was listening to it, I was like, oh, it's a weight loss thing. And so I listened to it and I started hearing hunger and fullness. And I remember losing 10 pounds and throwing back 15 on like about a month later because it was not about God. It was like I was thinking about the weight loss. And I remember how she posed it to me. She said, you know, I know you want to put God first in everything. You can do this with this, with this food. And I'd never heard that before ever anywhere. But then when you get into the class, you realize that it is solely about a relationship with God. And if you're just doing it to lose weight, it's just not gonna work, but if you're doing it because I wanna get closer to God. And I will say one other thing real quick, just for anybody that's like doing it and still struggling. Um, I feel like what helped me tremendously was that, you know, you've always said, if you were given a cancer diagnosis and the doctor said, 
this is what I want you to do. I want you to do these three things every day. You wouldn't miss that with a gun to your head. You wouldn't miss those three things. You would, because you want to live. You want to live. And if you want to change your life, you put the class together so you had this reinforcement and you had this backup information that went back in there and said, look, this is how you put God first. Or this is where you, how you run to him in your testing time and when it's hard and when this happens. And there was this incredible workbook that came with the class. And I remember going, I remember us digging into that together and answering questions almost every night. I didn't finish the whole book. The book is so full. I mean, it would take, if you really, I mean, it'd take you a while to get them all. But I remember doing almost all of it, you know, with, with her and answering those questions. And then when we'd get together, we'd want it like, what did you say on that? And like kind of sharing, but it literally kept the focus up the entire time and it helped the pa- you know, pass all the tests. And, be- and that's where you felt like the total transfer happening, where all of a sudden it wasn't, it wasn't, ter- it wasn't, a, it wasn't a big of a test, you know, it was easier to go. I don't want that. I want what I felt last night. I want what I felt this morning. I want what I, just that connection with God. So I will say, Sometimes people wonder why they're not, you know, they're, they're not doing everything that the doctor ordered. You know what I mean? They're doing part of it, but they're not like, let me, let me, let me dig, really dig in. If you really dig in and let's see where you are in about six weeks, I think you're, you'll, you'll be blown away at the changes. So I'm perfect. grateful. I'm That's so grateful perfect. for this That's place. That's perfect. Beautiful. Okay. This is our first group. We're going to go now to our second group. And so please... Uh, let's clap for them, but also a warm clap for Michelle Wright and Michelle Hammer. So thank you guys. So have a seat, dear girls. Have a seat. Okay. So we also have some questions coming along and through, and Ted's going to screen that. And um, Yeah, so a question came in from Nancy Manis. And she said, I've, ho- I've heard older people say they need vitamins as we age because the body is not able to work efficiently. True or false? Okay, look, if, if, you, if you take chemistry and you understand what a vitamin is, it's a catalyst to run a chemical reaction. Basically, it, it, when you have a chemical reaction, the catalyst will help it just like, it makes it easier for you. It doesn't have to have all that energy. It can, it helps eliminate some of the difficulty of the reaction and uh, your body is, it's chemicals. I mean, it's carbons, it's hydrogens, it's oxygen, it's nitrogen, it's chemicals. And you're eating chemicals and organic means it contains carbon. So everything you eat is organic. I mean, if you meant organic means it has a different kind of a way they kill the bugs on it or whatever, I mean, all that. I mean, there's so many definitions and they're not defined. So you can use that word, but um, it doesn't have a definition by, by like a government. So you can, you can, but all these, these vitamins are found down in the food. And then you say, oh, well, the food's no good. You know, all right. I mean, they were fined. I mean, the, the Jewish people, even way back then took the flour and they got the entire hull off of it. And, and, and the finest of flour was what was given to God, all that. I mean, I don't want to get too much into all the chemistry of that tonight because we're about not quitting. But I can tell you right now that the, vit- the, the, the nutrients are in there. They're in there. They're in there. I mean, they didn't even, like, isolate them until about the 1950s. How did all those people before 1950 live? And I don't know, they didn't take a pill. I mean, how did they live? And don't tell me that, I mean, we had grandparents, I've got people that parents lived over 100 years old. There's, and they didn't ever take a vitamin. And they said, oh, well, the food was better. No, I mean, you, you know, this probably, it's more fortified now. Uh, niacin, thiamine, riboflavin, iron, all that's put into our breads. And then you've got vitamin A and D put down into the milk. And then you've got, you know, you've got so much more fortification going on. And so, uh, and then people are overeating. And I, it's just, it, it, what we're doing is we're, we're killing ourselves with too much. You will know that I'm right by reducing it, come on back off of things, and then all of a sudden you're gonna have more energy. So, uh, but Nancy, Thank you for that question. I love you. And 
if you want, I mean, is it going to kill you to take a one-a-day vitamin? Hey, it's not going to do you any good unless you take it with the meal. I mean, it's there to help with the chemical reactions of the food that you just ate. So you're kind of like wasting your time unless you're eating it in conjunction with the meal. And then if you're talking about, you know, swallowing some minerals like calcium or whatever, uh, you know, that type of thing, um, then go right ahead. I mean, they all smell so crazy. And a lot of times I just think, oh goodness, I'm taking calcium, I'm swallowing ground up bones from a horse's leg or something. I, it's like, I don't know, sometimes it just grosses me out. I don't like know exactly where they're getting this stuff and they don't tell me, you know, where they ground that calcium from and I don't know whose bones I'm swallowing. <laughs> and so, I don't know, I just kind of get grossed out a little bit. But anyway, you know, do what you want to do. Uh, I don't know anybody dying from like a one a day either. So, whatever. I don't know. How do I'm you out. answer that? I, 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 <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> I'm out. No horse bones for me. I'm out. <laughs> okay. So we were talking about relationships, and um, we were talking about um, uh, relation, relationships with God, and Ted was just explaining, uh, you know, how he, he, he lost, lost the weight, but then he put it back on because he did, had not gotten that key that it was, you know, about, you know, relationship with God. And so uh, I talked to y'all right before the show and both of y'all got into a class and uh, lost all your weight, right? Michelle, you lost- 50 pounds. 50 pounds. And Nicole, you lost- I lost 25 pounds plus 20 pounds of pregnancy weight, all within 13 months. All within 13 months? Of having my son, yes. I mean, uh, and so, tell us about that. I mean, y'all clicked on, listened to the same tapes anybody else, went through the same stuff, like, but you picked up on quickly what it was about. Um, I, all I can say is I, I heard hunger and fullness, and, and I applied it very quickly and I remember going to the candy dish that was on the countertop and grabbing a handful of M&Ms and looking at this handful of M&Ms and going, I'm not hungry. And so I put them down and I walked away. Why? Why? We're picking I, your brain. I, I looked at those M&Ms and I said, I want God more. There you and go. if this is going to separate me from God, then I don't want those M&Ms. I mean, somebody's going to say that sounds legalistic, but it goes back to week three of your Way Down Basics, can God do better than Rocky Road ice cream? So when you're wanting food, but your body's not calling for it, and he says, if you destroy this body, I'm gonna destroy you. Uh, that's a motivating factor. And you know that too much is the number one thing that gives you can either cancer, heart disease, or diabetes. Those are your three killers. It's overeating It's the number one reason why people have those conditions. There are genetic conditions, there's inborn error of metabolisms, there are reasons why some people uh, have hereditary of something where they've been passed down to, uh, for their liver. Their liver basically is not working very well. And so it's, oh, it's either, your liver's what makes the cholesterol and your liver's like making too much. I mean, no matter what you eat, you can change your diet all you want, but your liver and that those people sometimes have heart attacks at 40 or whatever, but, uh, uh, but here's the thing. Okay, so you figured that out, and then Michelle, you said something similar. Tell us your story here. Well, I feel like when I came to Way Down, I realized it was the truth. I knew for sure, and that I wanted to live it so that others could see it in me. And then when I found that relationship with God, I was scared to death to ever lose it. And then I had so many situations come into my life that I got to practice running to God, running to God, pain, running to God, pain, running to God. And I found him, you know, like he'd give me the scripture that was exactly, you know, when you see uh, a mother of seven and will breathe her last, <laughs> I'm a mother of seven. That was, that kind of sticks with you. It's like, okay. Um, wow. Fear is I forget real. that. You're a mother of seven. Yes. Okay, this is a mother of seven <laughs> and she looks like a teenager. I mean, it's so adorable. <laughs> Wait, 
it, it, it's a, it's, it's the, um, I don't know, they look, they're looking for a bottle of what makes you look young. It's, it, it, losing your weight is one of the major keys. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so you lost your 50 pounds, but you, it was, you, you're mentioning something that has not been brought up tonight, and that is that fear mm -hmm. that I'm gonna lose it, or that fear, that fear, that beautiful holy fear of God. Even it says Jesus had a holy fear of, of God. Jesus had a holy fear, but obviously, not my will, but yours be done. And that's what you're saying with the M&Ms. Yes, if, if, if that's how Jesus maintained his relationship with God, not my will, but yours be done, then we've got to imitate that. Not my will, yours be done. And I definitely had um, an example to imitate. And, and the, you know, in the classes, but also nearby uh, where we live, we used to live in Minnesota, very small town of 3,000 people. And so Kristen Price is the one that introduced it to me, and she lived it faithfully, and she was the, the one that I could, I could watch and imitate. And then um, as I lost my weight, I, you know, by following hunger and fullness, I was tempted with the food rule, so that question that Nancy suggested about vitamins, I was definitely heading that way toward vitamins and, and food rules. And so hearing hunger and fullness, it did click but it had to go deeper than just a food roll. I had to take it to heart, and I had to make it about a relationship with God. So seeing those M&Ms for me was going, I'm not hungry, and I don't want to lose this relationship with God or this opportunity that I've been given to show God that I want Him more. And you talk about way to, uh, ways of escape, and I remember first hearing about that, and my time was nap time when the children were in bed, and so I grabbed my Oreo cup, you know, so it's, it's, it has to be short so you can dunk those Oreos into the milk. And I grabbed the biggest stack of Oreos that I could and I dropped them on the floor. And, and What's, the, What stopped you from eating? Yes. I'm just kidding. Yes, well, it was my floor. I knew when it had been mopped and I knew what had been, I knew, I knew when it had been mopped, I knew it was on the floor. And I knew that it was clean enough, in my opinion, to eat off of in the past. But for the first time, I knew it was God telling me no. I know, don't you love it? Yes. The communication of the heavens with you. There's people that actually get mad when they get a way of escape, like, like they, they get intervention. And, and or they get mad if they're awakened in the night or they get mad at the, and I'm sitting there going, I love it. I love it because it's like, oh, the heavens are wanting to talk to me. The heavens are wanting my attention. I can't believe God would ever even, who am I that God would want my attention? Who am I that God would provide a way to escape? Of course, that's scriptural. I mean, it's scriptural. It says that there's no temptation that's happened to man that's, you know, not common, all the temptations are all common. There's nothing, there's not gonna be one temptation that happens to you that has not happened to everyone. And then, on top of that, he says, and with it, he will provide a way of escape. He'll provide a way of escape for us. And so, um, that's where I got that. But also, praying. The, the, you know, we said very early on in the show, prayer is that, that sign that if you're not praying and your ceilings are, your prayers are hitting the ceiling, or if you start back in the praying, then you're on the right path. I can guarantee you that you're, you're gonna be back into the routine of obeying God rather than yourself. Uh, that's, that's that key of praying to God for it. And then you kept it off. Michelle, you kept yours off? Yeah, well, I lost the, the weight initially and then I got pregnant for Carrie right away, so I, and I lost all my pregnancy weight by my six week visit. Wow. <laughs> the midwife just spun her head, you know. How many, after starting, how many children did I, you have after? Two in way down. Two. Two? Yeah, so. And lost your weight? Lost the weight. But what God showed me was that what really shook me up was when I would look in my heart and see, there's still a love for food there. There's still a greed. Yes, I stopped the deliberate of disobedience with eating before I was feeling hungry or, you know, deliberately eating for emotional or, or binging. But there was, I, you know, would still stumble and I'd go, whoa, what is that? What is that? 
And what I saw was not only God watching me in the kitchen, but God looking down in my heart. That scared me, that there might be greed in there or, you know, so it just kept me going. Okay, I'm, you know, getting up today, I'm going to do better or get up the next day and do better. And, and so you look back and go, oh, wow, I'm, you know, I did better this year and I'm more free this year and I, I don't even care about that anymore, you know, so... It's you think you're eating courage. all the time or you think you're eating too much and then you go, I can't believe my body's still like, aren't I benching out or doing too much in, in your body? It's amazing because you're, what, what you were greedy for or what you, I don't know, it's, it's a transforming of the mind because you, you still think you're, you're eating this large volume but it has shrunk. And so that's where you want to go to permanency. That's, that's the difference. All you out, people out there that are dieting, and we'll take some questions now. Ted, you got some questions? I we mean, do. bottom line, all you people dieting, if you want to keep dieting, count on really uh, good setup for weight gain. You're going to gain your weight back because dieting keeps you focused on yourself, dead end street, self-focus, and on your, it lets you eat large volumes of low calorie foods. You have free foods and points and you count calories and you do all this, but you're not, you're not focusing on what these successful people were focusing on and theirs was a prayer life and doing exactly what God wanted to do. So we've got- We do, Brianna, Washington State. Why does Satan work so hard on trying to get me to run back to the low carb diet? I feel like he's always trying to get me to quit. By the way, all the low carb diet did was make me gain weight and hate eggs. The keto diet is all the rage and works for some people. It's so frustrating because I always want to run back to the diet that didn't even work for me. Am I crazy? I know, Brianne. Oh my word, and it is out there. I've never seen anything permeate this country like low carbohydrate, and it's got about 15 different names. I mean, it's been named everything on the planet. Uh, if somebody can like look up a few of those names and shoot those over because they're uh, the low carbohydrate, high fat. Mm -hmm. what, you're, what they're asking you to do is, um, see carbohydrates are what the body lives off of and most of the world, 80% of their diet is carbohydrate. It's bread, bread, cereals, rice, you know, everything is a carbohydrate, you know, uh, all that wonderful, wonderful stuff. Okay, so all foods are wonderful, but that's, that's 90% of what the world's eating as, uh, I mean, you know, America mm -hmm. though is into a lot of meats and fats. Okay, with it, when you eat the low carb, it puts you into ketosis. And uh, that means that you're in a diabetic state. So you're actually creating a diabetic state for your body and you're spilling literal calories off through your kidneys. And I will tell you, these people get very sick and very ill, very difficult to do because you're going against what the body wants and the body is asking you not to do it. And then you're dreaming of all the carbs that you're, you know, you'd like, like to eat. But there was Atkins, there was the protein. I know paleo, the keto, paleo diet is. The is. paleo diet, you know, all these different diets that are out there that are low carbohydrate, high protein. <clears throat> Eat all the fast. What'd she say she got sick of? Uh, eggs. Oh. <laughs> I mean, you know, you get to the point where you like you're you're about to vomit because it's you know all this high fat protein, and it will put you into it. It really it's really harmful for the body. Why do you run back to a diet? It lets you eat all you want to eat, so you're focused on yourself and all you want to eat so you can chew all you want. And um, hmm. I mean, that's the opposite of, of this. We actually close the old mouth down. And uh, so you're, 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 clo you're, close, you're closing up this little trap here for a while. And it doesn't, it doesn't, you can talk, you can pray, you can, you know, use your mouth to encourage others, but you cannot eat until you're hungry. And maybe if you're thirsty or whatever, uh, drink some, but you're, you're, you're drinking when you're thirsty, eating when you're hungry, but bottom line, you're, you know, like even uh, people that uh, are overeaters, they have a hard time at some point even sleeping through the night. They've got to get up in the middle of the night and eat and all that. And we, you, that's how you become super obese. 
is you're eating 24 hours a day. Okay, so we've got any other questions? We do, yeah. Darlene Eddy up in New York, she's uh, asking how to be okay with eating at a time when I'm hungry, seriously growling for like two hours and traveling and need to stop, but my boyfriend isn't hungry. How to not feel guilty or almost selfish to have to take care of my needs? Well, if you are overweight um, and you bypass hunger, uh, it'll go away like very quickly if you're overweight. And if you even get something to drink or sometimes one cracker, it'll go away. And then you can then let it come back around when your boyfriend wants to eat. Hey, you know, companionships and all that kind of stuff, it's about giving and uh, so just use, use that at a, I mean, you're not traveling every day, and so that's not a really a, a big time problem, but uh, take, a, take a cracker with you, but you don't even have to eat because you will, your body will pick up the extra food that you had for, for lunch, supper, all those other meals that you overate, take it off the hips, ship it into the bloodstream, and then it feeds, it feeds your body from your stored energy. You have your own indoor refrigerator freezer on your body and it'll just come right out and you have like a little meal that way don't even have to it's like in, intravenous feeding you don't even have to eat it's very convenient and use your body fat and you lose weight at the same time it's awesome <laughs> it so, uh, of why do people at this time of year go to dieting? They want quick, but weight down's quick. They want, uh, maybe it's the known versus the unknown. People, I, I, I wonder, you know, and Ted, maybe you could comment on this, but why is it that people try everything but this prayer life in this, this with God. Because when you go with God, you don't know when the hunger's gonna come, so you have to give up control. You don't know when the fool is, so you have to give up control. You don't know when you're gonna get hungry again, so you've gotta give up control and give it to God. You don't know uh, when you're gonna be tempted, and when you're tempted, you've gotta go to God. Is the whole thing is you go to God and then 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 you go to God through Jesus Christ. You're going to God all day long until it is your life. It is your breath. It is going to God. Jesus said, I've got a food that you don't even know about. It's like this food fills you up and doesn't rob you. You know, overeating robs you of a wardrobe. You can't find anything to wear. It robs you of relationships because I'm telling you, there are people that, I mean, you literally have ruined your body for your spouse and that's just not right. And then it, it robs you of your self-esteem. It robs you of your finances. It's expensive to, uh, food is expensive to overeat. And- um, A ton of energy, gosh. Yeah. Energy. Uh, just, it robs yeah. you of your energy, thank you. It robs you of, um, you know, spiritually, a relationship with God. But when you go back and do it God's way, you get your energy back, all of a sudden clothes show up, people give you clothes or clothes all of a sudden fit. Um, you know, you get, you get your looks back, you get your, the, like, like I may have already said the physical with the energy, but I mean, your health back. I didn't mention that, it robs you of your health. I mean, you get your health back, you get your relationship, it builds, you feel better about yourself, you're, you, you have more energy to give. And so you can give and give and give and that, you talk about having more friends and more, mm -hmm. you know, a better marriage and, and better relationship with your children. People can't even get up and go play with their children because they're so in love with the food or the refrigerator and, um, and into themselves. Hey, look, I, I just, you know, the, I, thank y'all for coming on tonight. Thank everybody tonight. But I, I want to end tonight on this thought is that there is nothing better on the planet in a relationship ongoing all day long with God. There's nothing, there's nothing out there, there's nothing that can compare, nothing that gives greater dividends, nothing that gives back more, nothing that's like, you know, there's nothing like winking up at God because you know that you just got that prayer answered and that, you know, that's what you need. And, you know, human relationships are like amazing. 
and should mimic this relationship with God. But nothing replaces this relationship with God because God is all-knowing, all-powerful, richer, um, more coordinated. He listens more. He's on call 24-7. Uh, there's not, there's, so the Way Down never was about losing weight. I mean, you know that, right? After the, like the first orientation video, you know it's never been about losing weight. It's all about, it's a, it's a good trick, no? To teach you how to fall in love with God. And, and so uh, it's, that's what it's about. So what was the secret tonight? It was the relationship with God. The secret of all the people up here, how are you not gonna quit? Well, who's gonna quit working on a relationship with God? I mean, that doesn't make any sense. And so we don't quit that. We go after it. We don't want to lose it. It's, it's, it's like saying, here's $5 billion. You want to give it away? Uh, hmm, I don't think so. I, I mean, you want it. You want it. And I want, I, 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 there's nothing that would, uh, you couldn't put me in a jail, that wouldn't stop it. You couldn't take everything away from me, that wouldn't stop it. Uh, you, could, you could saw me in two and I wouldn't give it up. And so, uh, there's, th that's, that's how much. Jesus went and died to show you that he is not giving it up for anything. He said, not my will, but yours be done. In other words, I don't know a relationship with God more than anything. So all you guys out there, can you go after it? Can you do it? Can you overcome? Yes, you can. And God bless you. God bless you, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And we'll see you next week. Sing for eternity with our God and His Son.